I'm Alan, and this is our Sunday online Bible study at 9 a.m. for January 22nd, and I'm glad that you joined us. I hope that you'll follow along with a Bible or a Kindle or a Bible app on a tablet or smartphone. I hope that you'll share this. Be sure and like and comment. Let us know how we're doing. We appreciate all the feedback and appreciate the information. So today we're looking at Isaiah chapter 58 verses 6 through 10. And it's all about God promising light. It's, an, it's part of the Old Testament prophecies from the prophet Isaiah. And the lesson focuses on this. God's love demands that we spend ourselves, in other words, we become servants to end oppression. There was a lot of oppression when this was written, and there is still oppression today that Jesus does not want, part of it's because of our sin nature, part of it's just because we just don't care, but we need to be aware of it, and when we can, we need to address it. So let's look at Isaiah from today's reading and see what today's lesson has to teach us. Isaiah 58, verses 6 through 7. Is, is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free, to break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. So in Isaiah chapter 58 here, we encounter the Lord's message to his people about having true service to God. And it's not about following certain rituals, you know, doing dotting, dotting, connecting the dots, A to B to C and think, oh, we've covered all our bases, God's happy. And that's, this passage is telling us that's not what God is looking for. See, there's too many people that follow certain rituals, but God wants us to do good. He wants us to lead holy lives. And right before this, the people were fasting for the wrong reasons. And verses two through three, which is not in our lesson, there is concern over God's apparent lack of response to their fasting. And the reason there wasn't a response to their fasting is because they were fasting for the wrong reasons. They were fasting to get something from God. And the people gave every appearance of looking like they were seeking God and his will and that they were trying to be obedient, but God was far from their mind. And they abstained from eating certain foods on, a, on an annual fast day or certain occasions, but verses three through five tells us they also adopted times of traditional, at times, times of traditional humility, such as bowing their heads and putting on sackcloth and ashes, but apparently God paid no attention to their fasting, and he didn't give them what they were seeking. That's because when they fasted, they kept on oppressing their workers. In other words, they were asking for God's help, and they were fasting, but they were still doing the wrong things. And through unscrupulous means, they kept their workers in poverty and in debt. Outwardly, the people of God appeared to be humble, they appeared to be devout, they appeared to be pious, but they were quarreling with each other. And the Lord saw right through their hypocrisy. But God did more than just condemn 
the people for their hypocritical fast. He also explains to him that the kind of fasting in verse 6 that would be genuine, what he wants from their fasting. And the people were, were to free those who were wrongly imprisoned, rather keep them in a, a sad state of confinement. Also, rather than oppress those who worked for them, the wealthy were to treat the poor as well as all people with fairness and to pay them what they had earned. And it clearly, it shows that the people of Isaiah's day had missed the point when it came to fasting. God didn't want their pious acts or their holy acts when they had unforgiven sins in their hearts. And they continued in immoral lifestyles. They could have had correct worship and doctrine, but they also needed to have compassion for the oppressed and the poor and the helpless. And to emphasize the true nature of justice, God told Isaiah through God, or God through Isaiah told the people to feed the hungry, to provide clothing and shelter for the poor. That's one of the reasons why the church has, you know, we have the, the, the food pantry here, and that's why the, the church helps to clothe people and feed people and, and, and get them housing. Because that's one of the things God wants us to do. But unfortunately, Isaiah's writing, because the well-to-do, the people who had the means to help, were not providing food, clothing, or shelter. And so Isaiah chastises the rich for turning away from their fellow citizens. And the law tells how Israel was supposed to take care of the poor in the land. It was all the way, it was set down all the way back in Deuteronomy chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. For instance, when they enjoyed good harvest, they were to share with those in need. Widows and orphans and aliens without land of their own were often victimized by greedy people, especially money lenders. And debtors, once they couldn't pay the debt, were often thrown off their farms. These injustices were why the prophets for God, such as Isaiah, continually cried out against the wicked rich people in Israel. The prophets said that true worship meant obeying God's laws, but it also included care for the poor. Otherwise, the worship was nothing but a sham, a show that meant nothing. And so Isaiah talks about the results of genuine fasting in verses 8 through 10. Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and the malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday. And what Isaiah is saying, it's not too late for the people who were fasting improperly. They could yet change their ways. And if they did, God is prepared to bless them richly if, if they were sincere, sincerely obeying him. And so Isaiah here in verses 8 and 9 records one group of promises of divine blessings if the people practice true fasting, that is, helping the needy. Then the light, as it says in verse 8, a spiritual blessing, 
would come forth and healing or spiritual restoration would quickly appear. And not only that, but the righteous would go before the people and the glory of the Lord would follow them as their rear guard. This is an allusion all the way back to Exodus where the God Almighty was the light that went before them at night and protected them from the rear, protected them from being attacked from the rear. And during the day, the pillar of smoke showed the presence of God and they were again protected from the rear. The time from Exodus was a great blessing for the Israelite people. Now, God did not answer the people's prayers when they fasted improperly, but he's saying that their obedience would open the way for him to answer them and declare, here I am, like he says in verse nine, that God would be there for them. And the same way God will be there for us. But before the people's light could shine, they needed to fix several problems that were plaguing the nation. They needed to do away with oppression. They need to do away with the pointing finger, which was probably a, a sign of contempt or accusation and malicious talk, as it says in verse nine. And they also needed to help the hungry and the oppressed. And if the people changed, then the nation's darkness would be turned to light and their spiritual night would become like the noonday. And so that means that their distress, their calamity, which were the results of their sins, would give way to the light of God's spiritual blessing. And the people would receive God's divine guidance they would have their needs met, and they would receive strength. We live in a broken world where people need help. It's not enough to say, what a shame. There are people out there that need help. Isaiah says in verse 10, we must spend ourselves in behalf of those who are oppressed and meet the needs of those who have less than we have. And if we do this, we will become light that Isaiah and Jesus talked about. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 16. That's what Jesus wants us to be. He wants us to be light bearers to a dark world. He also wants us to act justly. Martin Luther said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And there is a toxicity. There is a real problem with injustice when it's left unchallenged. We are not called necessarily to, to a lifetime of work to oppress oppression, God does call some of us to do just that. But for most Christians, our daily battleground is our daily lives. It's the moments that we see as we live our daily lives. Helping, being ready to help the less fortunate. When you hear a racial slur directed at someone, we need to speak up. When we see somebody being bully, we need to stand up in his or her defense. When a senior is mistreated because of his or her vulnerability, we need to address that abuse. We don't have to join a movement to address injustice, but we just need to be a light that reflects God's justice when and where we see it. And sometimes injustice creeps into our own behavior. We may be aware of it or we may not be aware of it. But either way, we're going to need God's help to 
figure it out and to get rid of it. We need to listen to God to see and hear how our actions, how are the things we do or don't do are hurting others and also hurting God. See, how we walk with the Lord matters much to him. And that's why the Bible is so clear about our obligation to be just people. Indeed, God's word tells us, he has shown you, O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. And so I hope that we're doing that. And if we do that, we will be defending the weak. The Hebrew prophets spoke up against the injustices that they saw that God sent them to tell the people to fix. And Isaiah condemned those who placed the yoke of oppression on the vulnerable and praised those who stood up for them. God's message is no difference today. Therefore, as God's people, we need to uphold God's justice while we defend the weak and stop oppression. Let us pray. Almighty God, help us to resist injustice. Help us to speak up when we see it, because that's what you want us to do. That's how we show your light and your love in the world. And help us to be willing to, to right some of the wrongs. We can't fix the world, only you can, but we can stand and work in our little corner of it and help us to be ready and willing to do so. We ask this in the name of Jesus, amen. Don't forget here in Paris, live at 10, 10 a.m. we have worship and you can watch us online, Facebook and YouTube. I hope that you'll come and join us, but if you can't, Watch us online, invite a friend to watch with you, and have a great Sunday.